Now, let me set you at ease that in typically formal settings like this, you might consider it rude to get up during a speaker's remarks, but in the event you decide you need to run downstairs to the casino at any point during my remarks, you should feel perfectly comfortable. You'll be welcomed by all my friends there. Now, you heard folks who preceded me here at this lecture a moment ago talk about the role of loyalty. And this, of course, is a big issue in our business. And I do want to spend a minute on it because as a Chamber of Commerce, I think this is a very transferable notion and it has deep consequence for many of us operating in businesses where consumers have lots of choice. We looked very carefully at the behavior of our customers and we discovered that we were getting about 38% of their gaming budget. Now, I don't care where you go to school, even Harvard, 38's not very good. You don't call home to your mother and say, Mom, I got a 38. The customers you're going to work with tonight who know you and who you care about, they're giving 62% of their business to somebody else. It's a little bit like knowing your wife's past dating history. This is very disturbing. <laughs> so the whole world became focused around this idea. How do we generate loyalty? Now, I remind you that as customers, you're constantly dealing in cases where the same logic applies, but the purveyor isn't terribly interested. One of my favorite examples of this that we all experience is the grocery store. Now, in a loyalty environment, the best customer, the most loyal customer needs to be rewarded for loyalty. I shop at the same grocery store I've been shopping in for many, many years, in fact, decades. And there's no way for that loyalty to be reflected to me. Instead, certain items are on sale. If I buy them, I get a discount. If I don't, I don't. And at the only point of service contact, there's one group of people who have differentiated service, the people who buy 12 items or less. Why would you give the best service to the people buying the least? <laughs> Somebody has two items. They get taken right through the line. I got a cart full of stuff. I've never met a coupon in my life. I'm stuck behind a lady with an accordion file full of coupons. She checks out, the store owes her 12 bucks, and I'm still waiting. <laughs> we ask our customers to enter into an exchange. You let us watch what you do, and we will give you back things that you really like, like meals and limousines and show tickets and gaming activity and vacations and merchandise. And we want it to be easy for you to get it. So if you're a student of the Old Testament, you know that God said that all people are created equally, but she never said that all customers are created equally. And this is fundamental to the notion that while we want to take good care of everybody, we want to take distinguished care of those whose business we believe will be the best with us and whose business can grow the most with us. Now, you know, Hangover took place at Caesar's Palace. It involved a group of guys that got together for a little bachelor party. And it became a bit of a cult movie sensation among many generations. And we had a customer, Chinese fellow of a very considerable gaming worth, who came to us after Hangover became very popular. And he said, I'm turning 40, and I want to relive Hangover. <laughs> well, what does it mean to be in Hangover? Well, Mike Tyson's in Hangover. It turns out Mike lives in Vegas, and he's generally available if you ask him nicely. And you can work with the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals to have a tiger visit your facility if you treat them properly and keep them out of the way of other small animals and children. And we were able to create an experience that looked to this gentleman a lot like hangover. Now, I tell you this, obviously an extreme case, to give you an indication that that is really what we're in the business of doing, creating highly customized, rather extraordinary experiences for our guests that are based on what we learn about their interests that allow us to treat each of them in a special and different way. I would suggest almost no matter what business you find yourself in, whether it's serving consumers or serving businesses directly, there is a way to think about what are the salient issues that drive loyalty, not simply price, that enhance the value of the experience of your customer and how can you learn about them and consistently invest and reinforce in that experience as we've tried to do in this one. 